Summary of Lies My Teacher Told Me by James Lowen James Lowen investigates the fallacies that are taught in high school American history classes in his book Lies My Teacher Told Me he starts by pointing out a strange problem, American students hate history lessons, even though Americans love history, as shown by how famous historical books and movies are. He decides that the cause of the problem is the history textbook itself. Most history texts tell a boring, culturally biased story of the past that turns off readers, especially Native Americans, African Americans, Latinos, and women. One of the biggest problems with texts is that they often leave out unpleasant parts of historical figures' lives so that they look better. For example, most texts show President Woodrow Wilson as a peaceful, democratic leader with high ideals. Wilson was a pure racist and a violent imperialist, but almost no texts say that. When talking about the life of a historical person, textbooks try to avoid any kind of debate. For example, textbooks always say that Helen Keller was a hero for learning to read and write as a child, but they never say that she was a communist agitator for most of her life. The past of America's colonization, which was full of deception, theft, and murder, is often praised in textbooks, which is another important bias. In this way, History works tend to focus on the part of white Europeans. When talking about the history of America's discovery, for example, texts almost always say that Christopher Columbus found the New World, even though there is some proof that Viking, Irish, and African explorers settled there first. Textbooks act like the Native Americans, who had been living in America for thousands of years, just happened to find the land. Textbooks also gloss over Columbus's murderous colonial policies. They don't talk about how he stole and enslaved thousands of Native Americans, tortured them, and made them work in mines. Most texts don't mention that when English settlers went to Virginia and New England in the 17th century, they brought with them dangerous diseases like influenza and smallpox that killed most of the Native American population. In fact, when texts talk about the history of New England, they seem to tell a creation myth instead of a clear, true story of the past. Also, history books don't tell the whole story of how Native Americans and European residents shared their cultures in the ages before the Revolutionary War. Even though the Europeans learned a lot from the Native Americans about how to cook and hunt, and some of their ideas about democracy may have come from the Native Americans, textbooks give the impression that the Europeans changed Native American society but not the other way around. Overall, history books show white Europeans as heroes who are fully formed while minimizing the accomplishments of people who are not European. One of the worst mistakes in history books is that they don't talk honestly about the past of racism in the US. Even though all texts agree that slavery was wrong, they don't talk about the racist ideas that made it possible in the first place. These ideas are still alive and well in America. In this way, texts make it seem like slavery was something from the past that has nothing to do with the present. Just as bad is how texts paint a pretty picture of the Reconstruction period. Even though it is clear that Reconstruction was a failure as an organization, most texts say that it failed because the new black leaders didn't know how to run the country. The truth is that Reconstruction failed because white Southerners, who still held almost all of the power, were still racist. Lowen says that part of the reason African Americans still lag behind their white peers in the 21st century is that they've been taught in their history classes to think that they're weak, lesser, and unable to run their own lives. History books don't talk much, if at all, about important American ideas like democracy, white power, or socialism. Instead, they just list a bunch of people and dates. For example, Texts describe John Brown as a religious fanatic and Abraham Lincoln as a practical politician, even though there is proof that both Brown and Lincoln were two of America's best thinkers on race and equality. In the same way, texts don't talk about class differences in America in an honest way. Instead, they spread the lie that America is the land of opportunity, where anyone with enough ability and drive can succeed. By keeping up this myth, Texts teach students to think that the poor are to blame for their own problems, since only lazy people could be poor in America, right? Textbooks also don't talk about the American government in an honest way. 
even though, during the 20th century, the federal government won, had an aggressive foreign policy that involved toppling democratically elected governments and replacing them with dictatorships and two, tried to stop the civil rights movement, textbooks say that the government is committed to promoting peace, democracy, and equality. Because of these absences, students today know so little about recent American history that it's shocking. When students talk about the Vietnam War or the war in Iraq, they don't know much, if anything, about what started these wars. They also don't seem to realize that the government may have gotten involved in both of these wars for evil reasons. In the last few parts of the book, Lowen talks about why and how bad history books are written. He shows that most history texts, even though they claim to be written by famous historians, are actually written by ghostwriters who may not know much about history. Publishing companies and teachers both have their own reasons for putting out and using bad textbooks. When they do this, they make more money and parents don't worry as much. People are happy to accept a skewed, ethnocentric view of history, which may be the most important reason why textbooks are so bad. Most American students think of history as something that just happens, thanks to a few heroes or maybe the acts of a good government. This is because they have been taught to believe in this kind of history for years. Students don't seem to be aware of the huge problems facing their country, like the spread of nuclear weapons and climate change. Textbooks need to do a better job of making readers feel involved and active, so that students can, in a way, become their own historians. Instead of manipulating young people to stay passive, ignorant, and bored, textbooks may instead motivate young people to make a difference in the world if they were written in such a way. About the author James Lowen was born in Illinois and went to college at Carleton. As a junior in high school, he spent a semester in Mississippi, which made him question how history books keep different kinds of bias alive. Lowen got his Ph.D. in sociology from Harvard University by studying Chinese Americans in Mississippi. After that, he went to teach at Tougaloo College, which has always been mostly black. In 1974, he wrote a history book called Mississippi, Conflict and Change. The Mississippi School Board refused to let the book be used in the classroom because it was too controversial. He sued the school board and won. Lowen took two years to write Lies My Teacher Told Me. During that time, he went to the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. and read dozens of history books. When the book came out in 1995, it caused a stir and gave Lowen a small amount of fame. Since the 1990s, he has added more parts to lies and written or curriculum books about the history of race and racism in the United States. Before he died, Lowen started doing research for a new book called Surprises on the Landscape, Unexpected Places That Get History. Lowen died on August 19, 2021. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.